I want to talk to you a little bit about this. You might remember this from Fox News. Um, I'd like to show you all the old clips that prove me right on uh, so many things that we've said, but I don't own any of the stuff on Fox News. I didn't own any of the stuff on CNN. That's one reason why I wanted my own network. I'm tired of doing things for other people and then having them be in archives that no one can ever see again. But I talked about this on uh, television, and luckily I talked, it on, uh, talked about it on radio, which I do own, so I can show you at least the clip of my show where I talked about this a year ago. I want the left to know I plant my flag in this soil. If I'm wrong, so be it. So be it. Then I am wrong. And you can discredit me all you want for the end of time. But I'm telling you, I'm not wrong on this one. And there are three points that I want to make sure are very clear. This is what I'm telling you. These are the things that I believe. One, groups from the hardcore socialist and communist left and extreme Islam will work together because they are both a common enemy of Israel and the Jew. Two, groups from the hardcore socialist and communist left and extreme Islam will work together because they are the common enemy of capitalism and the Western way of life. Mm -hmm. Three, groups from the hardcore socialist and communist left and extreme Islam will work together to overturn relatively stable countries because in the status quo, they are both ostracized from power mm -hmm. and the mainstream in most of the world. Mm. You got it? Got it? Got it? That's what I said a year ago. And by the way, um, what day are we going to do the uh, special? It's, uh, where is it, on the TV board? February 1st someplace. There it is. A caliphate one year later on February 1st. Caliphate one year later. We're going to go over some of these things because it's crazy. All right. So this is what I said. And then I said the protests would become contagious. They would cascade. They'd sweep the Middle East, which they did, begin to destabilize Europe, which they have, and the rest of the world, which they're here now. Okay. I want to show you some things that... Uh, this, this is the chalkboard that I started, I, I said this morning to my staff. Ah, uh, had a lot of stuff going on. Between the stories and the news of the day and even George Soros himself saying exactly what I've been saying all along about the economy, you may, you just may want to give just, just a small, as Megan McCain might say, a small emoticon of credibility. I'm not asking for much. I mean, not as much as she has. Obviously, she's more smarter than I am, or me. But just take a look. Consider for a moment what I'm saying to you. Because this is an outline. Can we open these, both these boards up? O open up uh, both sides of the chalkboard, please. Because I want to show you, this is where we were on this side. We were back here. And some stories have happened since. This is where we were when I was over at Fox. And this is where we're going. We've already been here. You know that these things are now happening. If you've paid any attention at all, you can see them happening. I want to show you some of these things now. Because this is where we're headed. New prediction board. Uh-oh. Is that trouble? No. No. I don't know when this will be right, but I'm telling you all of these things are very likely to happen. And I'm going to back it up with these are some of the stories because... When I wrote this up this morning, I gave this list right away to my staff. And I came in and I ranted for about an hour. And uh, I said, here, write it down, write it down, here it is. And so we put that down on the staff. And then somebody asked me, why are you saying that? Why are you, and I said, well, give me the, hang on. Give me the stack of stories. I don't know if I have the stack of stories here yet uh, from this morning. But it's a stack that I get of news stories. I usually get it at night and I read it at night. And then I get an additional stack in the morning. And I read through them. And I said, let me just give you the stories that are out today. To back this up, war, collapse, control, and hate. I'll give you the stories. Let me just take you through this. Economic collapse, first to Europe, then to the U.S. and the world. I don't know when this happens, but that is what's coming. 
The U.S. dollar will no longer be the world's gold standard. Civil war, and unlike the civil war of the 1860s, this one's going to be fought in our inner cities, and it's going to be led by radicals, anarchists, communists, revolutionaries, and Islamists. And a lot of good people are going to be swept up into it. It's not going to be like uh, the Civil War where we had the North and South. It's going to be in our cities. You won't know from neighbor to neighbor who's the good guy and who the bad guy is. And who's going to be feeding it. It's going to be fed by those in power in Washington, D.C., and in our universities, and in our medias. And it's not just Civil War that is going to be fed. First, hatred. Xenophobia, hatred... Um, hatred against Muslims, hatred against Jews, hatred against Christians, hatred against uh, 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 atheists, you name it, hatred unleashed like you've never seen before. Radicals, Islamists, communists will seek violence in our cities and on our border as they pour in from South America and Mexico to, quote, reclaim land. That's going to happen. You're going to see you're going to see Venezuela, Cuba, and everybody else. They're all in bed with the radical Islamists from Iran. They are coming across our border even as we speak. But a lot of stuff is going to happen as the, the, the average poor person after a global collapse down in Mexico is used by these people to go get that land back. Farmers will be urged to farm collectively. It will also be taken from these people. These people will take farmland from farmers, and violence and famine will follow. I believe this is what's coming. I don't know when, but if we all survive and someday we have a laugh, I tell you what, meet back here in 10 years, and if this hasn't happened, you can make fun of me. Make fun of me all you want. I'll celebrate. But that's what's happening. Okay. And you know what? Here's the thing. If I'm wrong on this, we go 10 years and this doesn't happen, I'm broke. Because I'm so wildly discredited, I'm broke. If this happens, I'm broke. So I don't win in this either way. I don't win. Just like when I said this, I didn't win. What happened? George Soros spent a, a million dollars to get me thrown off a of fox, which didn't work, by the way. Do everything you can to discredit me. Smear me so your friends won't listen to these things. This is what's happening. Did I win? No. So why would I double down and tell you this? Because it's true. Now, what makes me say this? Because that, that was the question. Glenn, what are, you, what are you saying? Well, let me show you. In Iran, they are now saying that they're going to stop the oil. The story this morning was that the oil is going to be stopped um, in the Strait of Hormuz. They're going to do everything they can to stop oil in the Strait of Hormuz. They're already doing exercises in the Strait of Hormuz, and they're announcing we're going to stop it. Because of that, we have to have the Strait of Hormuz open. So what happens? Well, we've sent now American aircraft carriers over to the Strait. So now we have an American aircraft carrier right there in the Gulf. And Iran is facing us down. Okay, all right. So now what is the EU going to do? What are they going to do? Well, the EU, they've decided now is the time for an oil embargo. Okay. I remember saying on the radio about seven years ago and then having Benjamin Netanyahu and saying, you know what, the world is going to do it and they're going to do it too late. And you'll have no choice. Well, I think that's where we are. But... Maybe, maybe the EU gets into an embargo and says, hey, we're going after Iran. The problem with that is it's too late now. The other problem is Russia. Russia says you will not have an oil embargo against Iran. They've selected sides. Russia and Iran are now one. That's your axis of evil. But I looked in Putin Putin's eyes and he's totally fine. No so Iran and Russia. Now why, why is Russia taking this stance? Well, because they really, really want to, um, they really want to have 
an, an oil problem. Now that doesn't make sense now, does it? Oh, you know, yes it does. What, what, what is it? What is it that Russia has done and Europe has allowed them to do that our good friend Ronald Reagan, boy, we shouldn't have listened to that crappy actor, huh? What did he say? Don't build a pipeline. Don't allow Russia to have a pipeline. Never become dependent on Russia. That's exactly what Europe has done. And now there is another story. The EU is having an embargo. Think about what this is going to do the, to the economy. They're going to embargo on Iran, which will cause tensions with Russia. And the United States is sending an aircraft carrier over. But here's the extra great thing. The EU just lost an oil refinery. Oil, biggest oil refinery went down. So what's going to happen to their gas prices? What's that effect going to be on their economy? If there happens to be violence in the Middle East, which I'm sure this Arab Spring, it'll never happen. If they happen to bomb an oil field, if they happen to block the Straits of Hormuz, what happens? What happens? Well, in the end, where does Europe get their oil? Not from us, because we're not drilling. No, no, no. They get it from I looked in Pooty Poot's eyes. Russia wins. It works to Russia's advantage to have the Middle East unstable. Then you have the Arab Spring, and you have the Egyptian parliament, which is now 75% against the United States and against uh, uh, the Israeli state, and they want Sharia law. No big deal. It's just sweeping the Middle East. See chart number one. Sweeping the Middle East. By the way, forget about you and me for a minute. Let's talk about the 25% that don't want Sharia law. What do you think is going to happen to them? You think this thing's going to get better or worse? And what does that mean for Saudi Arabia? Better or worse? Where we get our oil. And then there's the EU unrest. You don't have to go to me on any of this stuff. George Soros has said this as well. This is why I say war is coming. Well, this and this, they're not separate. You have the IMF now saying global collapse is coming. Global collapse. Soros came out in his headline, global collapse is a possibility. Did you notice that India is now buying oil with gold? It was only traded in US dollars. You couldn't buy any kind of oil without US dollars. India now is being allowed to buy it with gold. Oil in Iran. And the EU has announced now that there's a 1930s moment coming. Well, that doesn't sound good, now does it? Hmm. 1930s moment. Well, wait a minute. That's what Soros said, too. He said it would head into xenophobia and all the old hatred, which is exactly what I said a year ago as well which piles back into this. When people are hungry, when people are losing everything that they thought they had, what happens to them? Every time it goes into global war, every time the progressives, the communists, the national socialists get in charge, the world goes to war. It is the next logical step for these guys because if you have a war going on, at the end of the war, look at, look at the war on terror. Have we changed as a nation? We're now patting grandmas down and taking her diapers off at the airport. Have we changed as a nation? You're damn right we've changed as a nation. You can change all kinds of things if there's a war going on. The whole world will change overnight because there's a war going on. You'll be able to cover and kick the tracks behind you to make sure nobody follows you You've changed the world. You've plotted its change. But no, 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 it's all spontaneous. How could it possibly be spontaneous? I'm either a prophet or I can just read the tea leaves because it's not that hard to figure out if you just are willing to accept the truth. So that just brings us to collapse and war. It doesn't bring us to hatred and the scariest part, control. That'll come up next.